Part 1. White Clouds. Great Tree Moon. Three Houses. The icy winds of the Agma Mountains have begun to scatter, and the verdant fields once again spring to life across Fodland, heralding the start of a new year. As they celebrate the dawning year, the people pray that they may realize their full potential, just as a tiny sprout hopes to one day grow into a great tree. The continent of Fodland, said to be protected by a revered goddess, has existed since time immemorial. Three ruling powers now control the land. In the south lies a region long held by a more than 1,000-year-old dynasty, the Adrestian Empire. Beyond its borders, to the frigid north, is the home of the holy kingdom of Fargus, ruled by the royal family and its knights. To the east, a league of nobles that heeds no king nor emperor rules what is called the Leicester Alliance. Once consumed by a tempest of war and turmoil, Fodland and these three mighty powers now exist in relative harmony. This will be your first time at the monastery. I'd be happy to show you around. It really is Fodlin in a nutshell. The good and the bad. Like it or not, we'll be there soon enough. There it is. Garrick Mock Monastery. It's been years since I've last set eyes on this place. To be forced to see her now, uh... I've never spoken of this to you before, but many years ago, I was a knight here. I reported to the Archbishop, Lady Rhea. As you know, the majority of folks in Fodlan are devout followers of the teachings of Seros. The leader of that ridiculously large religious organization is the Archbishop, Lady Rhea. Thank you for your patience, Gerald. My name is Setic. I am an advisor to the Archbishop. Right. Hello. It has been a long time, Gerald. I wonder, was it the will of the Goddess that we have another chance meeting like this? Forgive my silence all these years. Much has happened since we last spoke. So I see. The miracle of fatherhood has blessed you. That is your child, is it not? Yes. Born many years after I left this place, I wish I could introduce you to the mother of my child, but I'm afraid we lost her to illness. I see. My condolences. As for you, I heard of your valiant efforts from Alois. What is your name? 
A fine name indeed. From the bottom of my heart, I thank you for saving those students of the Officers' Academy. <laughs> Gerald, you already know what it is I wish to say, do you not? You want me to rejoin the Knights of Seros, don't you? I won't say no, but... Your apprehension stings. I had expected that Alois would have already asked this of you. I must step away for now, but I expect they will desire a word with you soon. Please listen carefully to what they have to say. Until tomorrow, farewell. Ah, I can't believe it. Force back into the Knights of Seros. I'm sorry I dragged you into this. Looks like I'll be stuck here for a while. And I'm afraid your services are requested as well. Nothing like that. They want you to teach, by the sound of it. You heard those brats earlier talking about the Officers Academy, right? Well, the Academy just happens to be short a professor. And apparently that damned Alois went and recommended you to Lady Rhea. So, you must be the new professor. My, how stern and handsome you are. Uh, no. <laughs> I'm not the one you're looking for. You can handle things from here. Good luck. And watch out for Lady Rhea. I don't know what she's thinking making you a professor like this. She may be up to something. Stay on your guard. Oh, it's you then? So young. Competence and age are not necessarily correlated, as you well know. I am Hanneman, a Crest Scholar and Professor at the Officers' Academy. I wonder if you bear a crest of your own. When next you have a moment to spare, I insist that you pay me a visit so we can delve into the subject further. I'm Manuela. I'm a professor, a physician, a songstress, and available. It's nice to meet you. Of course. Before I came here, I belonged to a renowned opera company. Perhaps you've heard of me? The Middlefranc Opera Company is beautiful, peerless. Spare our colleague the needless chatter, Manuel. Now then. It seems you'll be taking charge of one of the Academy's three houses. I expect you haven't yet been briefed on the nature of each, have you? Do you really not know? Fine. I'll do you a favor and explain. The Officers' Academy is comprised of three houses of students, each of which is closely affiliated with its region of origin. The Black Eagle House is for students from the Adrestian Empire, their house leader this year is Edelgard, the Imperial Princess, who is in line to be the next Emperor. The Blue Lion House is for students from the Holy Kingdom of Fargus. Their house leader this year is Prince Dimitri. He is to be the next King of Fargus. Lastly, there is the Golden Deer House, which is for students of the Leicester Alliance. Their house leader is Claude, grandson to Duke Regan, the leader of the Alliance. To think that the next Emperor, King, and Sovereign Duke are all here. It certainly is a promising year for the Academy. I'll say. I just hope none of those little treasures cause any trouble. Hmm, quite. For now, I suggest taking a stroll around the Academy to get your bearings. And when you've a moment, please stop by my research laboratory. The old man has a point. Oh, and keep in mind that I've only notified the house leaders that you're our new professor. It's more fun that way. I suggest you try spending time with the students. Some odd ducks in that bunch, but they're good kids. I'm sure Lady Rhea will have more information for you tomorrow, but that should get you going. Good luck! You'll need it. Have you no intention of changing your mind, Rhea? Appointing a stranger, a child no less, as a professor at our esteemed academy is... I have made my decision, Sedith. 
I know worrying comes naturally to you, but there is truly no need. That stranger is Geralt's flesh and blood, after all. I can't say that's all too comforting. How trustworthy is this Geralt character? Is he not the man who went missing after the Great Fire 21 years ago? I would remind you that Flayne is now here with us as well. I beg of you, please consider whether this is an unnecessary risk. Sadith, they have my trust. Let that be enough for you as well. More importantly, I have received a report from Shamir. I am increasingly concerned about a matter regarding our suspicious individual. We cannot ignore those who harbor ill will toward the Church, especially if they are frequenting Garrick Mach. Yes, that matter is of great importance as well. I shall continue my investigation. Rhea, for now I will have faith that you are placing your trust with the utmost care. I pray that nothing occurs to shake that confidence. Of course. I assume you are already aware that you will be teaching here at the Officers' Academy, correct? To start, please speak with the three house leaders. You should also take a look around the Academy and acquaint yourself with your new home. That is your first task here at the Monastery. Please let me know if you accept it. Once you have finished, come and speak with me. May I ask a favor of you? I imagine you were a bit surprised that I recommended you as a professor here. Frankly, we had someone else in mind for the role, but they ran off during our dust-up with the bandits. Can't entrust students to someone who's abandoned them once before, huh? You saved the lives of the students you came across. That, at least, was admirable. Now, you should make the rounds. Go around the monastery and see that you greet everyone.
okay? So, you've accepted a teaching position here. Pity. I was hoping you would lend your strength to the Empire. I never properly introduced myself, did I? My name is Edelgard von Hressbauk. I am the princess and heir apparent of the Adrestian Empire. I wonder if you'll be tasked with leading the Black Eagles. I hope you've had a chance to meet everyone. Would you like to know more about any of the Black Eagles? Me? Well, some think I'm a bit distant, arrogant even, but there's little to be done. One day, I must rise to become Adrestia's next emperor. What else? Well, it seems to me that we may have similar personalities. Hubert is the heir of Marquis Vestra. He has served me since I was a child. You may think his blood runs a bit cold, but <laughs> actually that's rather accurate. Still, if you can get past that, you'll see he's quite astute and reasonable. For some reason, he thinks of me as a bitter rival and is always trying to challenge me. It's terribly irritating. His house is that of Duke Iron, which produces Adrestia's prime ministers. That family is, perhaps, too pleased with its own status. He's remarkably intelligent, but he only wishes to apply himself to tasks that particularly interest him, and nothing else. He's also fond of, well, napping. If he had any work ethic or sense of duty to speak of, I suppose he would be destined to become an official of the Empire. He's the second son of Count Burglies. He has no inheritance in his future, which is perhaps why he's always so eager to prove himself. He's overly energetic and rushes headfirst into any battle. If he ends up in your care, be sure to keep a close eye on him. She's Count Varley's only daughter. I suppose you could say she's a bit eccentric, but she seems like a gentle soul. I believe she shut herself away in her quarters and doesn't care to leave, but don't worry. I'll make sure she finds her way to class. Few commoners have joined the Black Eagle House, but Dorothea is an exception. She's a songstress from a famous opera company in the Empire. I'm not entirely sure what brought her to the Officers' Academy. To the west of Fodlan is an archipelago called Brigid. Petra is the granddaughter of their king. Brigid is a vassal state of the Empire, which is how she came to be enrolled here. 
She's incredibly smart and studious. Pardon me. Greetings! You must be the new professor. What a pleasure. As for me, my job is to stand here at this glorious entrance and leisurely watch over the comings and goings of everyone. Make folks smile, you know? Uh, and by that, I mean to vigilantly guard this entrance with my very life. No levity whatsoever. As of now, nothing to report. Think. The Golden Deer House is for students of the Lester Alliance. Our house leader is heir to the Alliance's leadership, House Regan. We have plenty of other prominent nobles as well. Room belongs to the Blue Lion House. Our house leader is Prince Dimitri. All of us here hail from the Holy Kingdom of Fargus. Right, right. Hey! This is the classroom of the Black Eagle House, which is for students from the Adrestian Empire. Our house leader is Princess Edelgard. There are many other nobles among our ranks as well. I am Hubert, a humble servant of Lady Edelgard. I heard you came to the aid of Her Highness. You have my most sincere thanks. This is Petra. She has come all the way from Brigid to study in the Empire. Back on her archipelago, she is actually a princess. In Fodlan terms, she would be called heir to the throne. Hello, I am called Petra. I am pleased to be meeting with... Uh, no, uh, I am pleased to have met you. Is it true that you saved Edelgard? That's incredible. The name's Kaspar, by the way. Pleased to meet you. Linhard, goodbye. Yeesh, Leonard. How'd you get into the academy with those manners? So, are you a student here too? Maybe we'll be in the same class. Hello. Well, aren't you just lovely? Is this your first time in the monastery? Shall I show you around? Oh, my name is Dorothea. Before I joined the academy, I was a member of an opera company in the Empire. You should hear me sing sometime. Bernadetta, this is no stranger. Our house leader owes this person a great debt. Is that not right? I am Ferdinand von Eyer, legitimate son of the Eyer family, the Empire's former... Hello. Please accept my apologies for the other day. You came to our aid, yet I hadn't even the courtesy to properly introduce myself. I am Dimitri Alexandra Blathed, Crown Prince of the Holy Kingdom of Fargus. Of course, at the Academy, I am simply a student. And I've heard word that you are to become a professor here. Delightful news. I still have much to learn, but I'm confident I could benefit greatly from your guidance. In any case, welcome to the Monastery. I hear you're investigating the different houses here. Did any of the Blue Lions catch your attention? Me? Oh, um... Please forgive me. It's difficult to open up on the spot, don't you think? I'm afraid my story has not been a pleasant one. I do hope that doesn't color your view of me, but I understand if that can't be helped.
Dr. Du was born in Dusker, and has been loyally working in my service for the past four years. He's rather taciturn, but once you get to know him, you'll see he's a kind and good-natured young man. Felix is the heir to House Fraldarius. He has a bit of a sharp tongue, but don't let that fool you. Deep down, he's a good guy. He gravitates toward people who are skilled. Perhaps you would enjoy a friendly competition with him sometime. He's the adoptive son of Lord Lenato of Castle Gaspar, but I hear he was born a commoner. He has an extremely earnest personality, so I'm certain he will approach your lectures with great enthusiasm. Sylvain is the heir to House Gautier. He is a capable person who highly values his friends. That said, well, he's always been a bit of a... <clears throat> skirt chaser, so to speak. Pardon my bluntness. I speak with him about it often, but it doesn't seem to help. I hear she was born to imperial nobility, but a twist of fate brought her to the kingdom. She may seem carefree on the surface, but she's actually a kind soul who pays careful attention to everyone around her. Annette is Baron Dominic's niece. She is a talented student who scored extremely high marks at the Royal School of Sorcery. She's cheerful and hardworking. Brilliant, really. Though she can be a bit oblivious at times. I hear she caused an explosion in the kitchen last night. Ingrid is Count Galatea's daughter. She is also a childhood friend of Felix, Sylvain, and myself. She is diligent, industrious, and principled. In truth, she is more knightly than most knights you will ever meet. scored a teaching gig here, did you? Talk about a great first impression. I guess that means I'd better introduce myself properly. I'm Claude Von Regan. I'm from the ruling house of the Leicester Alliance, but don't worry too much about all that madness. I'm guessing you don't know which class you'll be teaching yet, do you? I bet you'd like ours. We're not as difficult as the other two. Have you met the folks from the Golden Deer House yet? Care to know more about anyone? I appreciate your effort. Okay? Hey, hey! Hey there! Are you the mercenary who saved His Highness? It's an honor to meet you. I'm Sylvain Jose Gatier. Feel free to say hi whenever you like. familiar at all. Do you work here at the monastery? Oh, mercy! Do you think this is that mercenary people have been talking about? Now that I think about it, 
That does sound like something Dimitri may have said. I suppose you'll be enrolling at the Officer's Academy too, then? Well, it's a pleasure to meet you. My name is Mercedes, and this is my best friend. I'm Annette. It's nice to meet you. Yes. I have heard all about what you did from Prince Dimitri. As a citizen of Fargus, I thank you. He also said you're quite skilled. And he doesn't just say things like that. I look forward to sparring with you and beating you. Felix, must you always speak of fighting right away? Oh, and, uh, you may call me Ingrid. It is a pleasure to make your acquaintance. Huh? Hi there. You must be the one everyone's talking about. I'm Ash. Great to meet you. This here is Dudu. He serves Prince Dimitri. I have heard that you rescued His Highness. Words cannot express my gratitude. Should you ever require my strength, please know that I will hasten to repay this debt. Hey, hey. Okay. That's so. Uh... Well, well, scored a teaching gig here, did you? Talk about a great first impression. I get. I'm. I'm get. Have you met the folks from the Golden Deer House yet? Care to know more about anyone? <laughs> Piqued your interest, have I? As luck would have it, I'm pretty curious about you as well. But what's life without a bit of mystery? Let's just spend the next year or so learning about each other little by little. He's the heir of Gloucester territory. If you haven't already picked up on him, he's a bit arrogant and fancies himself a ladies' man. That said, deep down, he's really devoted and honest. Though I wouldn't mind never hearing him talk about his noble obligations ever again. He comes from a merchant family, but his parents died in an accident. Seems like he's had a rough life. Despite all that, he's just about the most cheerful guy you'll ever meet. His passions are training, eating, and... Actually, that's about it. second son of a merchant family. Since his brother will inherit the business, he's training to become a knight. If you ask me, it doesn't seem like he truly wants to be a knight. He's probably just doing it to please his parents. Lysithia is the daughter of Count Ordelia, and is probably the youngest student here. But watch out, she gets angry if you treat her like a child. As for me, I do it on purpose. You have to make your own fun in this place, you know? Marianne is Margrave Edmund's daughter, and that's pretty much all I know about her. She doesn't interact much with other students, so I wouldn't be surprised if a lot of folks here have never even heard her speak. Hilda is the only daughter of Duke Goneril. It seems her father and brother coddle her quite a bit. If you look up Lazy in the dictionary, her picture won't be there because she never got around to submitting it. Not too unusual for a noble, I guess.
Leone enrolled because she wants to be a mercenary. I think she said that her father is a hunter. She's pretty blunt and as stingy as they come. A habitual saver, too. I think she's hoping to repay her village for helping to send her here. be the renowned mercenary who rescued Claude. Honestly, you should not have troubled yourself over the likes of him. My name is Lawrence Hellman Gloucester. You will want to remember it. Um, hi, what do you think? So you're the skilled mercenary who saved Claude, are you? Oh, you are? It's such an honor to meet you. Ignaz Victor, my parents are Alliance merchants. And I am Lysithia von Ordelia. Please do not forget it. Are you that mercenary? Everyone's been talking about you. I'm Hilda Valentine Goneril, and her name is... M marianne Van Edmund. Are you joining the Knights of Saros or something? Well, I look forward to seeing more of you. Are you someone's guest? The dining hall's that way, if that's what you're looking for. No, Raphael. That's Captain Gerald's kid. Hi, I'm Leone Pinelli, Captain Gerald's first and greatest apprentice. I'm sure he's told you about me. Nice to meet you. I'm Raphael Kirsten. Who are you again? Um, hi. <laughs> yeah. Hello. Hello. What do you want? I am Yuritsa. I teach here. Weapon instruction. These are the training grounds. Goodbye. Yes. Hi. I'm real busy, so could you please move along now? Thanks. Okay, now, what else did Lady Rhea need doing today? What happened? Here I am again, the office of the Captain of the Knights. That said, I'm merely here to assist. Apparently, the current Captain is getting on in years. I hear the Captain has a hard time keeping up with the responsibilities of the job. Ah, uh, that's where I come in. by so soon? I expected we'd take some time, exchange a few smiles as we passed in the hall, flirt a bit, you know. Well, you're here now, and I do like a man who knows what he wants. Lock the door. Huh, that welcome didn't phase you at all, did it? What's the matter? Don't you like me? Or are you just so innocent you don't understand me? is my research laboratory. I've worked hard to furnish it with the rare materials and purpose-built equipment required for my work.
Welcome to the library. Here you may find literature from the far reaches of Fodland. I am Tomas, the librarian. If you have need of me, do not hesitate to ask. I have worked here for... Uh, hmm, uh, I have lost track of the decades, it seems. How are you enjoying your time at the Academy thus far? I hope you have found our halls brimming with the vitality of well-intentioned souls. Hmm. I suppose it is time for you to take charge of one of our three houses of students. I must note that I am personally against entrusting someone as lacking in trackable history as yourself with such a task. But it is as the Archbishop desires. The Black Eagles, the Blue Lions, and the Golden Deer. All so different. I hope you've made it a point to get to know each of them. Since you are new here, we have decided to allow you first pick. Manuela and I will take charge of the remaining two houses. So you have chosen the Golden Deer led by Claude, correct? Your heart has made its choice then. All I ask is that you guide these open minds with virtue, care, and sincerity. They are all promising youths who bear the weight of Fodlin's future upon their shoulders. I hope you appreciate what an honor it is to lead them. Brother? Oh, I am so sincerely sorry. I did not mean to interrupt. I'm in the middle of something, Flame. Is it urgent? No, no, it's nothing. More importantly, who is this? This is our newest professor at the Academy. Oh my! A new addition to the Officer's Academy! I am so very pleased to meet you, Professor. I am Sedith's little sister, Flame. I am so happy to make your acquaintance. Let us focus on the topic at hand. There is something you should be aware of. In a few days' time, there will be a mock battle between the three houses, intended to gauge the current progress of the students. We will be using this battle as an opportunity to ascertain your own abilities as well. Please do not disappoint the Archbishop. That is all. Wait, what? Are you really our new homeroom professor? Is that true? You aren't quite what I had pictured. Oh, sorry, I didn't mean that the way it sounded. I was sure you'd be roped into joining the Knights. Don't tell me. You chose this class just to get to know me better, right? I'm flattered, really. <laughs> Whoops. Now that you're our professor, maybe I should choose my words more carefully. Oh, well then, since we're pretty close in age and all, I suppose formalities aren't all that necessary. One must truly marvel at the exceptionality of this appointment, becoming a teacher to students almost the same age as yourself. How unusual. I've heard you are a skilled mercenary, but I cannot shake my discomfort at your new position. Are you really as strong as they say? Let's see your biceps. I bet I packed on more muscle than you. I doubt that. Apparently our new professor was personally recommended by Alois, one of the knights. As far as skill goes, I saw it with my own eyes. What's more, 
Teach here is the child of the most renowned former captain of the Knights of Saros. I heard. There's no way a child of the captain isn't worthy. It's simply not possible. The captain? Who are you talking about? Captain Geralt, of course. The most notable captain of the Knights of Saros and a peerless mercenary. Huh. It doesn't matter what you think of him. Captain Geralt deserves nothing but respect. Hmm. Well, after working as a mercenary alongside a father figure such as he, I have high hopes for our professor. Just because someone is special doesn't mean their children are special too, Lysithia. Assuming that a child is going to be exceptional just because of their lineage is a bad idea. Don't you agree, Marianne? Huh? Oh, um, yes. I suppose so. Well, we can find out for ourselves in battle. I can't wait to see what tactics you've learned from the captain. A battle? Shouldn't we have a welcome party or something first? I'll get the meat. How savage. I propose a nice conversation over tea instead. I am more than willing to procure some high quality leaves. Tea? You can't get to know someone over tea. There's no meat involved. It's not a party. Your common sensibilities are grating to my noble ears. Please quiet yourself. Sorry for the bickering, Teach. As you can see, the Golden Deer House is a rowdy bunch. We're not especially unified. You'll find nobles and commoners alike here. Those who are dedicated to their studies alongside slackers. But hey, that just makes your life more exciting, right? I really hope you're looking forward to the year ahead as much as I am. Say, while you're here, I'd like to use this device I designed to determine whether the power of a crest resides within you. Won't hurt a bit. Promise. You don't know about crests? Well, allow me to tell you everything, absolutely everything, about them. Is your calendar clear? This will take a while. Crests are a fascinating topic. But before one can dive deeply into said topic, one must first understand what crests are. They are power incarnate. They are said to have been bestowed upon humans by the goddess countless ages ago. They exist within the flesh and are passed down through bloodlines. Those who carry crests may excel at magic, display exceptional strength, or any number of boons. Each crest has its own power, the nature of which is beyond mortal understanding. For now. I suspect as much, yes. But we won't know for sure unless I look into the matter. As I said, crests are passed down through the blood. However, just because someone carries a crest does not necessarily mean their descendants will inherit it as well. Only a scarce few descendants of a crest's bloodline end up inheriting that crest's power. Perhaps one of your ancestors bore a crest, and you just happened to inherit it. That is how a crest usually presents itself, after all. Yes, of course. I'll get to the bottom of it straight away. Now then, please go ahead and hold out your arm over this device here. What is this? A pattern I've never seen before. Is it possible an as yet undiscovered crest has been detected? To think, there are still crests out there that even I am unaware of. How thrilling! <clears throat> 
Pardon my unrestrained jubilation. I have much to consider. You may leave now. I have more research to do in regard to this crest. Yes, so very much more research. But for now, your work here is done. Hmm, what could this line here be indicating? Perhaps it represents a lack of symmetry. Or perhaps, what in the world? Oh, I see. It may be connected to that, but to a greater degree than usual. With each moon, professors of the Officers' Academy receive a schedule for the month ahead. It notes the days on which events and missions will take place that month. Pay careful attention to your schedule, so that you may thoughtfully plan what you intend to do each month and when. These are the students' quarters. To better help you supervise them, you also have a room here. Your room is here at the end. Commoner students also reside on the first floor, while the second is primarily for students of noble birth. As a rule, we try to avoid discrimination based on social status here, but the nobility can be quite insistent when it comes to matters of propriety. Speaking of, it would be best for you to avoid improper conduct. I expect you to set a good example for the students. Yes. I trust you're eager to face the Black Eagles in battle. Enjoy the thrill of anticipation while it lasts. Soon you'll wish you had chosen to lead our house instead. If you continue to insist on distracting me, I will have no choice but to get rid of you. Joking, of course. Wow, Yuritsa sure seems strong. I kind of thought he was going to be the new professor assigned to our class. After that teacher ran away during our outdoor training, I figured Yuritsa was a natural replacement. I was surprised when you were suddenly appointed professor instead. I don't think I could hold my own against Yuritsa in battle. Well, I could probably take you, though. You really think so? With enough training, I'm sure I'll beat you someday. I care nothing of friendship. If you have no business here, leave. Listen to this. <laughs> so. Okay. I'm not too keen on the professor of my class. I really hope to focus more on strategy. Hmm. Maybe I should talk to my professor about transferring to a different class. Let me know when you are hungry. I will make you a quality meal, as thanks for your service to His Highness. I have a request. I heard about the upcoming mock battle. I want you to know, Professor, that I do not intend to lose. I hereby declare my intention to prevail at... Goodness, listen to me. The thrill of competition has carried me away. I won't speak so formally of a class assignment in the future. Hello. Did you hear the news, Teach? Looks like we're gonna have a good old mock battle between the houses. The Golden Deer House isn't exactly what you'd call an elite group just yet, so you may want to whip everyone into shape with some extra training. After all, competition is only fun if you win. 
To that end, I'd better prepare as well. You know, I was researching what it's like to live here long before I even enrolled. Want me to fill you in, Teach? Students and teachers of the Officers Academy are all free to use the facilities within the monastery. That means you can chow down with students at the dining hall or get in some one-on-one -on -one sparring at the training grounds. As you explore the monastery, try visiting the various facilities and talking to the people who live here. If you haven't noticed, there are bulletin boards in various places around here. You can check them out to see posted requests or to find more information about the market. I hear that fulfilling requests can even earn you the right to use more facilities. The bulletin board gets updated frequently, so it's probably a good idea to check it once a month. Far be it from me to tell you how to use the facilities, but it's a good idea to be mindful of how you're using your time. If you don't think about how you're spending your free time, it'll be over before you know it. Here at the Officers Academy, even professors are expected to study often to help maintain their strong leadership skills. In other words, students and teachers alike have to strive to grow in every possible field. So, about the mock battle that's coming up, you don't mind me sitting it out, do you? As a fragile maiden, I'm useless in battle. I'll just cheer everyone on instead. Captain Gerald's first and best apprentice. I can beat anyone, Professor. Even you, if I have to. It may have been only for a short time, but I learned from the absolute best. Um, I, uh, was just heading back to my room. Bye! to come out unless I really have to. Hope you're okay with that, Professor. Wow. Well, there's Dorothea, Hilda, and Mercedes. Lady Rhea is quite the beauty, too. And I must admit, I've even checked out Professor Manuela once or twice. You know, Professor, I think I'm going to like it at the Officer's Academy. There are beautiful girls as far as the eye can see. <laughs> Professor, I've got a small favor to ask. The Great Tree Moon is the best time of the year for naps. I could just forget all about my assignment. Yeah. Anyway. Oh, did you come to look at the plants too? The greenhouse here is really incredible. There are so many rare flowers I'd never seen back home. And herbs I never even knew existed. My adoptive father is the real expert. He taught me everything I know about herbs, including how to tell them apart and how to make medicines. You should try looking around the greenhouse sometime if the mood strikes you. Maybe something will catch your eye. Let's 
see. I'm a little busy. I really can't right now. I got a lot of things to do. Work and stuff like that. Why don't you look at the flowers in the greenhouse instead? They're pretty. Maybe. Hmm. Dear Goddess, Goddess, I pray to thee. Please protect us. <sighs> That's so. Hello there, Professor. Well, I call you that. But I am afraid I am not a student here myself. Should the opportunity arise, I would love to become a student and begin my studies in earnest. The monastery is kind enough to provide a sanctuary for my brother and I. He's the only family I have. Might you help me with a favor? me so much unbelievable the imperial princess the crown prince and the heir to the alliance's leading house this is one exceptional year that's for sure if you're a teacher here, you better watch your step. If anything were to happen to those kids, well, suffice to say that it could harm the reputation of the Church of Saros, which we've spent almost a millennium establishing. if you spoke up once in a while, though. Nice! I knew I could count on you. I really need to eat. I can't hold out until the next meal. Why can't the dining hall stay open all the time? I need to keep eating if I want to get stronger. Yes. I'm busy. Do you want something? I can't right now, but let's fight soon. I look forward to beating. Greetings. Here at the monastery, I have had many great learnings from many great people. I am hopeful to have learnings from you, too. As forever, I will do my best trying. Oh.
Professor, nothing to report. By the by, have you ever regretted a decision and wished you could go back and undo it? It's too bad there's no lesson for how to turn back the old clock, huh? But I suppose a bad decision isn't worth all that fuss anyhow. Indeed. As part of our commitment to the goddess, the knights undertake various missions across all of Fodlan. Assisting with the education of young nobles is also a part of our sacred duty. Hello, Professor. Uh, I have a teeny tiny question for you, if that's all right. You haven't seen a man with hair the same color as mine, a scowling face, and a generally gloomy demeanor, have you? Well, yes. It's a bit difficult to explain. Please just let me know if you do see him, okay? Yes. I hear a member of House Hressfeld, the ruling family of the Empire, has entered the Officer's Academy for the first time in ages. It is said that the Adrestian Empire's very founding was aided by none other than Saint Seros. That is why the crest of Seros is on the Imperial flag. In recent years, a rift has developed between the Empire and the Church. Let us hope this will be a good opportunity for both parties to reforge their close relationship of years past. Here's an idea. There are two types of crests. Major crests manifest their power effectively, while minor crests are slightly weaker. It is said that the closer a person's blood relation is to various saints and heroes, the higher their chance of bearing a major crest. Of course, there are also examples of major crests manifesting in children whose parents bear no crest whatsoever. The exact nature of how and why crests are inherited is still a mystery. Hi, Professor. Have you gotten around to visiting the library yet? absolutely loaded with valuable information. I only wish I wasn't burdened with the necessity of sleep, so I could spend all my hours there. In a manner, yes, but it's more that I want to learn as much as I possibly can. Professor! Do you know the provenance of our class name? The Eagle. That refers to the twin-headed eagle on the Adrestian Empire's coat of arms. And black is the traditional color of the Empire's armor. Hence, Black Eagles. I'm the only commoner in the Black Eagle house. I knew that before the first day of class. Those people are simply exhausting. Speaking of... Right, right. Before I came to the Officer's Academy, I attended a school of magic in the Kingdom Capital. That's where I met Annie. That's what I call Annette. Oh, I guess Lawrence was at the school of magic too. But Annie was always just so nice to me, even though I was older. She's my best friend in the world. Here's the story. The Blue Lion House derived its name from the honorary title of the first King of Fargus. Lug, the King of Lions, wore brilliantly blue garments. His chivalric exploits are recorded in multiple legends. The library holds various historical accounts regarding him and the Blue Lions. If you find time, you should read them. They're filled with insights. Huh, have you memorized everyone's names yet? I'm Ignatz, in case you forgot. 
I'm looking forward to learning from you. Our house is that of the Golden Deer. Do you know the significance of that name, Professor? Golden Deer are sacred creatures said to have protected Lester since time immemorial. All three of the houses have a meaning behind their name. You should feel free to ask around if that sort of knowledge interests you. Church has changed a lot since my time. Sedith, Hanuman, Manuela, Yuritsa, and many of the knights. None of them were around 20 years ago. Have you met Leone yet? Apparently, it was my influence that inspired her to leave her village. Sorry to burden you, but could you watch over her for me? She's the only apprentice I've ever had. Captain Gerald has hardly changed since 20 years ago. I've aged at least three times as much as he has. Why am I talking about this? Oh, right. It was because I just overheard Tomas remarking on the subject. The leader of a legendary group of knights returned. People are bound to be talking about the old captain. Apparently, there is to be a mock battle between the houses. Interesting, but I hope you understand that I have far more important things on my mind. My research is proceeding slower than I would like. Your crest is something of a challenge. Frustrating, yet also quite intriguing. I was wondering if I might get a sample of your flesh. A couple square inches would do. No, perhaps some blood. A couple of drops on the device are all I need. A mock battle? This early? Wow, Professor. They're not giving you any time to settle in, are they? Don't worry, though. Should you get injured, I will care for you all through your recuperation. I will see to you oh so very, very personally.
say now? Tomas has served as the monastery's librarian for decades. Actually, he was away from Garigmok for a spell, but he returned to his post last year. There is no one as familiar with the monastery's archives as he is. What? Professor, I hear you are lacking in knowledge of the Church of Seros. The library contains countless documents about the teaching and the history of the Church. I encourage you to make good use of them. Thank you. 
Professor. I trouble you. Say now. Do bear in mind that even as you are appraising your students, they are appraising you as well. I hope that you will do your best to form lasting bonds with your flock. Oh, and I look forward to witnessing your prowess in the mock battle. Much appreciated. Time for a mock battle, eh? Hmm. How should we go about this? Well, you'll be our commander, that much is for sure. Just don't screw it up and everything will be great. Got it, Teach? Right. I'll do whatever I can to help, too. I mean, I'm kind of obligated to. For example, if I add a little something to their food to upset their stomachs... Yeah, yeah, wink, wink, I read you. You can't officially condone that sort of thing, right? But say, hypothetically speaking, students from the other houses started racing to the infirmary. As far as anyone knows, it could just be a harmless little stomach bug making the rounds. Well, well, what a fascinating conversation you two are having. May we join? Claude, I can't believe you would stoop to such crooked schemes to gain the advantage. Have you no honor? <laughs> if that was really my scheme, I wouldn't be talking about it out in the open. I'm afraid you'll have to wait until our battle to see what's really in store. It's irrelevant anyhow. Whatever you have planned won't save you from a crushing defeat. She has a point. Still, 
I'm rather eager to see what sort of schemes that mind of yours conjures up. You heard him, Teach. We can't let these fine folks down. Are you serious, Teach? Well, if a crooked scheme is really what you're after, I've got more than a few of those up my sleeve. Oh, how precious. Looks like you and the students have become fast friends. While I am pleased that you are taking the initiative to acquaint yourself with the students, I'm afraid it's about time for the faculty strategy meeting. I'm sorry, professors. It's about time I return to my training anyway. Claude, Edelgard, until we meet again on the battlefield, farewell. I look forward to assessing your abilities. I hope you don't disappoint. So, this is the stage for the mock battle. The command's all yours, Teach. I'm sure you already understand, but the house that defeats the other two is declared the winner. Incidentally, I'll be overseeing this mock battle, so listen well if you want to win. Stay focused. Lines. I can stop the enemy's advance with grace. Do you have Lady Edelgard's permission to... <sighs> I suppose I've no choice but to provide cover. Thank you, Hubert. Uh, we are off to a terrible start. Ash, can you move to the front lines? I want to lure the enemy this way. Got it, Your Highness. Leave it to me. Once you finish preparing, make your move. Did you? Mercedes? Keep our enemy occupied until then. I'm on it. Oh my! 
We'll try our best. Sire, how did I fail? I must need to train harder. Another one down. Strong. Have to do better next time. This is what I do. Hmm. You are performing as expected, Professor. We will have to face you with our full might. Professor is rather strong. I suppose I'll have to call it a day. I'll celebrate later. We will use the forest to ambush our enemy. Everyone, I am counting on your support. If they're waiting in the forest, we do well to take a detour. <laughs> Look at that, a real-life princess. I'll have to be careful not to scar that little face of yours. Careful, Claw. I'll win no matter what, but you're only making things harder for yourself. Losing hasn't even crossed your mind, has it? Oh, this will be a bit of a shock then. To shock was your intention to begin with, was it not? Oh, 
Stay focused. I just worked harder. Definitely tougher. Forced to retreat. Well, things will only get tougher from here on out.
apologies, Your Highness. I can go no further. This is what I do. There's still a long way to go. A tough opponent, but I refuse to yield. Do not fool yourself into believing I will hold back. I'm not setting a very good example. Uh, you'll feel better. Claude, please. This is no time for idle banter. Your defenses are wide open. Well, that didn't get to him, huh? What a shame. I'll find a better way to ruffle him up next time. <laughs> Progress suits me well. My training was insufficient. I am so sorry, everyone. The rest is up to you. battle experience is, well, I was as good as useless. That's the golden deer for you. Hey, you didn't compliment me like that when my class won last year. Be mindful. wound up a patient in my own infirmary. How do you like that? All right, that's that. The winner of this mock battle is... the Golden Deer House. Great work, everyone. 
Even if it's just a mock battle, the taste of victory is sugary sweet. Great work, Teach. That was a brilliant win. I've been anticipating that magic moment when your tactics and my schemes entwined, and you did not disappoint. That composed expression you always sport like a permanent mask is a perfect complement to my ruthless schemes. That's a joke, of course. Mostly. To be honest, I had a bunch of other schemes planned as well, just in case the situation called for it. But I didn't have to resort to any of them. I suppose our opponents lucked out. Well met, Professor. The breadth of your skill was on full display today. I must admit that your tactics were masterful. I shudder to think what may have transpired had it been Claude leading us into battle. I noticed that too! We just did what you told us, and we won! I love it! As expected from a child of the former Captain of the Knights. Thank you for today, Professor. I have much to consider. I never doubted that our professor would be amazing. It was way too obvious. Don't you agree, Marianne? Huh? Me? Oh, um, yes. Of course. Well done, professor. Captain Gerald taught his child well. It would have been more of a surprise had our professor proved lacking. Don't you think it's a bit harsh to give Gerald all of the credit, Leone? In any case, it's clear that we only won because of our new mentor's guidance. A mercenary's wisdom and techniques are forged in battle. Those are the sorts of things you can only learn through experience. Right, Teach? But more importantly, it's time to celebrate our victory. Teach here has yet to try my well-renowned home cooking. I really do hope you'll join us. After all, I swiped some finely aged cheese from the dining hall for just this occasion. Your work with the students was remarkable. I can see Gerald trained you well. I do hope you were able to use the occasion to bond with the students. I'm so happy to hear it. Nothing would please me more than if you used this coming year to grow closer still. Of course, the mock battle was mere practice. The real fight is the battle of the eagle and lion, which will take place during the wyvern moon. You are expected to properly train your students so as not to humiliate the Academy during the long-held tradition that is the coming battle. As for today, I have called you here to tell you of your mission for the month ahead. Your class is to dispose of some bandits causing trouble nearby. Those affiliated with Garrig Mach Monastery have a moral obligation to help those in need, regardless of social standing. Students are no exception. Each month before the newly birthed moon departs, each house of students must complete their assigned mission. You shall work to complete the task at hand alongside your students and report back to the Archbishop before the deadline, understood. I will soon provide you with the necessary details for your first mission. If I told you now, I expect you would only forget and I despise repeating myself. I can sense something special within your heart. I have high hopes for you. Bandits, they say. Do you recall when we first met? You shall not fall so shamelessly again, correct? Have you no words for me? Do not tell me that you are shocked to hear from me. You ought to know that I am always with you now. To hear my voice should not come as a shock. What is this nonsense? All I was told was to kill as many noble pipsqueaks as possible. No one said anything about the Knights of Dan Saros being on our trail. You have proven yourself worthless, distracted by something so trivial. I had hoped you would achieve your goal despite the setback. 
But now a child of the night's former captain is in play. How interesting. Hey, this isn't what I agreed to! Hiring a mercenary as a professor. What was that woman thinking? Are you listening to me? How do we finish this? You die. What? Underestimating the Knights was an amateur mistake. One you will pay for. The road to eternal torment awaits you all. Now I must locate your replacements. Wait! Get back here! Damn you! Bye. <laughs>